Hi everyone, thanks so much for watching. My name is Louis Taylor, I'm a composer from Bristol and um, here I am with Barnaby Martin, or you might know him as Listening In. He's a fantastic YouTuber who's got some very interesting and comprehensive video essays and I'll link his channel above and below. Um, so here we are, Barnaby, not Barney, how are you? I'm very good, thanks Louis, how are you? I'm very well too, thank you very much. Good. It's great to be with you, finally. Yeah, it's great, Yeah, yeah. I know we've been... Uh, sort of chatting on various different uh, platforms and we've it's funny to, it's good to actually finally sort of chat and talk about things yeah. all things YouTube and, uh, and music and everything yeah yeah certainly is yeah um I, I was wondering if I could just sort of like straight off the bat ask you a couple of questions about you because um, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to love to hear more if that's okay um yeah we're absolutely far away yeah yeah so I was just wondering like generally what your path was into music and um and, and your general background and and also um you teach chemistry right so i was wondering I how do, yeah. you sort of got um well maybe you came away from music and into chemistry or um one or the other so i'm, I'm just interested in your general background so yeah i'd love to hear well more. it was it was a bit of a weird combination i've always i've always done sort of science and music and music has always been has been there i sort of um sang very a lot when i was young um, I wasn't in a cathedral choir or anything, but I did a lot of singing as a treble. Um, and when I got to uh, senior school, I started to sing a lot more in choirs. And and that was sort of, um, at the same time, I started to learn uh, properly to learn the piano and actually to teach myself how to play the piano. Um, I'd, I'd learned a little bit when I was young, but I gave up, I think, after grade two or something. Mm. And so I decided to actually not really formally teach myself, but I would sort of improvise and and uh, start to to play different tunes and start to actually write a little a little bit of music. I mean, it was all terrible. It was all sort of very... This was when I was 13 or 14. Right. Um, but all that... So I, I sang a lot. I, I played the piano a lot and I spent a lot of time uh, writing music on uh, on a very early version of Sibelius. Um and I spent most of my time doing that. Actually, I spent it during the holidays and mm -hmm. sort of weekends and and everything. I would always just go and just write these random pieces of music and these huge things like symphonies and operas and huh. and sort of concertos. I mean, tiny operas, not like big operas, but um, <laughs> they were all, all really, really terrible, terrible pieces of music. And I, but I just love the sort of I love the, the act of creation and, and the act of actually making something. Nice. Um, and with the nature of the Sibelius, you can put anything and anything can be played. And obviously all these pieces are unplayable, but, you know, it was great that I could actually just, just create these things. Sure, yeah. um, and and the, the, the science side of it came because I was just interested in science. And that actually, uh, I, I ended up not doing music A-level because um, I didn't think of it as a sort of viable career. Well, no one really told me that it was a viable career. I thought it wasn't something you could do uh, as a career but I felt like science might have been something that I was that I could have gone on to and to do more seriously so I did three sciences and maths and further maths at A level and and so my world was science but I still did loads and loads of music so I felt like I, f I didn't feel like I was missing out on music because I was doing I was singing I was composing I was playing piano I played the saxophone as well so I just spent all my time doing music, but then in my in classes it was science. Mm. So I, when it came to university, I really had, only had one choice, which was, <laughs> which was well, I could have done maths, but it was science or maths. Um, yeah. And so I, so I really, I, I had one choice, and I ended up doing natural sciences at uh, Cambridge. And uh, wow. but I continued the music. I did. Um, I sang in Trinity College Choir, uh, which is um, uh, was an amazing experience. Again, I didn't really, I didn't really know it was it sort of became much more well known in my time there but it was already starting to get well known with Stephen Layton I don't know if you've come across him a choral conductor he's oh, yeah. a fan fantastic fantastic musician and so I I sang loads at university and also continued to write and so science and music just sort of went side by side um then when leaving university, uh, again, I didn't really have any other option other than to do something science. Well, I could have gone, I suppose I could have, could have gone into the city or done something boring like that. But uh, I decided to become a teacher because my dad was a teacher. He loved it. And um, and it seemed like something that I'd really enjoy. And I have. And I so I've had, have been teaching for, what is it now? Nine years. Oh, wow. On and off. Yeah. So there was a period of, period of uh, is it nine years? Or maybe eight years, eight or nine years. I sort of slightly lost a track. A long time, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, a reasonably long time. But in all of that, in all of that time, um, and actually, really, in the first sort of five or six years since I left university, I was pretty convinced that the teaching I loved, but it was going to be something that was going to lead into uh, into composing. 
So I actually had an opportunity when my other half uh, got a job in, in Somerset and we moved down here. I thought, okay, now's, now's my chance to actually give it a go and give composing a go. And so I did do that, but it turns out that more time to compose doesn't necessarily always always equate to you know being able to achieve success so even though various things were happening at that time with with my composition um it it sort of didn't really go where i wanted it to go i didn't i wasn't entirely sure where i wanted it to go but it didn't quite give me everything i was looking for in a career it wasn't very stable there wasn't a huge amount of feedback process when you sort of got a piece performed it's your, you sort of just wrote a piece and had it performed and that was sort of it and maybe it might lead somewhere else but maybe it might not and I think it was probably a yeah a lack of stability that, that made me think actually maybe I do miss teaching so I, I've ended up I've going back into I've gone back into teaching so that's my sort of day job but uh, uh, as you know music music continues in in the form now of <laughs> of YouTube uh, mm -hmm. and not not with uh, and well less so much less so than with composing oh really do you feel sorry about that at all or do, do you are you quite happy with how your creative outlets kind of shifted well it's i thought and i said this for a very long time that i thought that composing was going to be the thing that i was going to do for the rest of my life hmm. i thought it was going to be i thought i was going to compose until i die um i actually from from basically from age 15 to age 20 28 I I didn't stop writing music, so I always had a piece on the go. There was maybe like a a time where I had a week off, but I would I would feel this itch and this urge to write something. So I would always go into a next piece, even you know most of the time without commissions, most of the time without anything to write it for. Mm. I was just wanted to write. So in actually in my draw down there, I have got piles and piles and piles and piles of unperformed pieces. Oh really? Uh, yeah, which is which is fine because I loved writing them and I did love writing them, but. Uh, it's and and I, and I thought, as I say, I was going to write forever. But then I, when I started YouTube, and I started making video essays, because they're so creative, because they require such a lot of creative input and creative energy, that I actually didn't miss the composing. I didn't think, oh, I need to compose now because I had something. I had something creative to do. And it sounds as though I'm sort of speaking finally as if I'm never going to compose again. Um, that's not true. I probably, I probably will compose again. But at the time, you know, at the moment, I'm, I'm sort of not and haven't, well, haven't written a piece for apart from one piece, which I'll tell you about in a bit. Hmm. Haven't written a piece for I think it's coming on two years now. Oh, really? That's quite some time, isn't it? Yeah. But it's good that yeah. you found some other form of creative expression that you love doing and and, mm. and can find the time for. That's great. Yeah, and and it's. And it's funny because I think this is true for other music YouTubers as well, other people who have sort of tried to find another creative out outlet, that composing is a wonderful thing and it's an amazing collaborative and can be incredibly rewarding thing. Mm. And I've loved the people I've worked with. I've worked with some, had the opportunity to work with some amazing musicians and orchestras and ensembles who have been uh, incredibly generous. I think people like John Slack and James Turnbull come to mind straight away. The Barclay Ensemble, uh, you know, choirs like a Luminare choir, loads of gr just amazing musicians who have been very, very kind in performing my music, um, and it's given me an enormous buzz. But it, th there comes a point where you go, okay, well, I'm putting in loads and loads of effort because I was writing constantly, but it wasn't, it wasn't just, it wasn't giving me what I wanted and that feeling of sort of immediacy. Right. Yeah. It's a very it's a very lonely business and and, and I'm, this is not to put off anyone yeah, from composing yeah. but I found it quite a lonely thing and I'm also a massively impatient person oh. so <laughs> so you know waiting around for people to ask me to write music was yeah, yeah. <laughs> was I found I just found really infuriating so I was like I have to do so I have to do something I have to create yeah, something right. that, you know, that I can put out into the world mm. you know I don't have to wait for someone to ask me to put it down into the world I can just do it yes. I can send it out there and I can get feedback uh granted from you know people I don't know from the internet but you know I can get feedback straight away. Yeah, right. Um, and that's uh, that's what I I found YouTube gave me. Um, I didn't know really what. I still don't really know what it is. It's a it's a sort of weird thing that is still in its infancy. It's still very young as a as an artistic form. But I think there is definitely potential to create something quite 
um, well, quite unique actually, and quite and potentially quite beautiful. Yes, yeah, through 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 YouTube. Yeah, I mean, uh, which I'm, I'm sure you, I'm sure you probably you, you agree. I hope, I hope, I'm, yeah, I think you definitely probably agree. Oh, there. I absolutely do. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, for me, I've been interested in filmmaking for basically as long as I can remember. In fact, mm. filmmaking for me was probably my first interest um, and my first hobby before I got mm. a piano or anything like that. And um, I started to um, make these really awful YouTube films, like you, <laughs> you with your composition at the, at, at the time. And I was also <laughs> writing some really, really awful music too. Um, mm, and yes, I'd, we all did. Yeah. yeah, and I'd make it onto a little CD of a crappy um, iPod recording and try and sell it to my family for a fiver and make some of it. <laughs> well, it's funny because I did, I did similar things, but I was obsessed with getting, like, having a published score. So I'd mock up these, you know, fake published scores and I made up like a publishing house. For oh, the, nice. We lived in a house that was happened to be called Hausen, so I created Hausen's Publishing and I created all these scores and I printed them out on our home computer mm. and I would sort of try and bind them <laughs> and make them look as, as pretty. As, I mean, the pieces were terrible, but I was just obsessed with the, like, the aesthetic, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. beautiful little little piece of little score that I had that I could right. show people, yeah. and in a sense, you know, that is what I'm doing now. I'm I'm packaging up a little a little nugget of something that is that I've created that I'm really aesthetically pleased by. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that <laughs> sorry, essentially, I haven't changed, but I'm just you know doing it in a different form. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, <laughs> and I, I feel the same way. Like I, with my um, videos, I try and spend as long as I can on the um, mm. video editing process to try and make it um, as the like the animations and stuff. I try to make them as good as I can I can do to the best of my ability, and I'm sure. I mean, I know you do as well with all of your videos. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I I remember reading a comment about one of your videos. It was the what does color st- no, yeah, what does colour sound like one? And that, that mm. ending where it, they all, all the different um, uh, specs of the art flash The painting of it, yeah. That was just like really, really quite an emotional moment almost, I would say. <laughs> and and it's, there is a very, there is a sort of beauty to video editing in itself. It is an, an art form mm. in its own right, I would, I would argue. Um, oh, definitely. Oh, completely. Yeah, and and uh, and there's actually every single aspect of the the the, the video essay making process is artistic and creative. Yeah. You know, from the from the topic choice, which in itself is very creative, to the the thumbnail design, to the, right. the you know the script editing, to the you know well actually the research and the script, mm. to then then the audio editing and the way you actually record your voice. Then there's the the and, and as you say the video editing itself, right. and to try and create. Like uh, and this is copied. I'm I'm unashamedly copying Nerdwriter because I, I mean, we anyone can see <laughs> is that you know uh, his video essays are are the best, and I'm just trying to. Um, well, initially was trying to imitate. I, I feel like hopefully I'm moving into a sort of different region with my essays, but initially I was just completely inspired by him. And my first my first essay, um, <laughs> I remember trying to sort of like imitate his voice or imitate the style that he was doing. So there was his. Um, I think there's one. He's one of his essays on. Oh, I can't exactly remember which one I was trying to imitate, but I, but I did, and, and you can definitely hear that if you go back and listen to that essay. You can definitely hear that my I was putting on some sort of weird affected voice. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. I don't. Well, I think I don't do that anymore. I hope I don't do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, but it's it's a very it's a very very creative process. It's and and uh, yeah, and so I don't. I don't wake up and think, oh, I wish I, I wish I were composing instead of having to do a video. So I think, oh, great, you know, I can spend my time when I have it, uh, you know, making this, making this essay, making it beautiful, and actually constructing this little gem, yeah. this little sort of ten minute gem. That's how I, that's how I approach it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's filmmaking, isn't it? And and that's probably one of the most, yeah. um, one of the most expressive mediums of art, I would say. Uh, yeah, well, it, it is. Yeah, it is. But it is basically filmmaking, and there's. You're you're sort of creating a a film score, and the the well, I mean, the advantage of being a music YouTuber in the sense is that the music is often is often given to you because you're analysing a particular piece of music. But then, even in that, there's the, the huge number of creative choices you can make about how you're going to use the audio. You know, are you going to uh, you know what 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 part of the uh, the piece are you going to focus on? Uh, you know what recording are you going to use of a particular classical piece if it has multiple recordings? Right. How are you going to use the audio? Are you going to use it in um, uh, constantly? Are you going to play the whole piece and actually just talk over it like I've done a number of times? Or are you going to select a small bit and then analyze that bit and then cross reference it with something else? Right. Or 
Um, and then, then when it comes to essays that of mine that are that are effectively unrelated to music, like my ones on art, and like that Kandinsky one, mm. where I'm, there was some musical choices that were suggested. Like um, uh, there was uh, uh, some interest he had in Wagner, which was that was obvious. I could use the Wagner, but for the rest of it, it was entirely my own choice to create a basically create a soundtrack right, yeah. for the essay. Mm. Um, so, you know, choosing all of the music that gets the right pace, that gets a, a, yeah. a story, gets a three-act structure, that, that I can actually use the music to to control the pacing of the video essay. Right, definitely. Which which I really love. I love I love that process. Yeah, no, I completely agree. That's one of my favourite processes as well, as, as, as the whole thing. Because it's like, um, in my, roast, my most recent video, I tried to um, choose pieces which could uh, nicely relate to each other. You know, I, I used... Mm. Um, Bach's Goldberg variations, uh, the aria from that, and um, mm. I tried to find another piece that was a little bit more, more symphonic and in the same key. Um, but I realised mm. that when I got to the point which I'd cut off the Bach at, it was it, it modulated by that point. So mm. then I found something in that key and used that instead. And and that whole process yeah, it's of a... trying to pick and match is, is quite fun, isn't it? It is. It is. It is fun, and it is difficult with with keys in particular. And 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 actually, the most difficult thing is with is with temperament, especially if you're dealing with uh, something. What you know, for example, I've used a lot of essays with uh, with Mozart and and Bach, and um, I don't think I've used any Beethoven. But but uh, depending upon the particular ensemble that's recorded it, they'll record it at a different temperament, and the pitch will be slightly different. Mm. And especially if you you know recording something that's something's that Baroque pitch, and then something right. else is it is it standard pitch, as it equals four forty. Then then you're like, well, how am I going to merge these two yeah. together? Um, and there was uh, so for my Rothko essay, I think I actually I think I was naughty. I think I ended up using a recording of um, no, I didn't actually. Uh, I used his Abelflöte Mozart, the Magic Flute, yeah. and that was I think that was not at A equals four forty. Oh wow! But I can't but I can't remember how I mixed it with the other audio to make it. Or maybe I just used Mozart throughout that I so I so actually there was no there was no issue I can't remember how I mixed those right. two but yeah. you're right it is a very it's a very interesting thing it's a and and it's something a lot of or most or ninety nine percent of YouTubers don't think about because uh, it's it's really uh, sort of reserved for a very small number of YouTubers who 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 analyze music and but also who think about think about the music in a much more detailed way I, for me the the audio is the first thing that always comes. I always construct all of the audio uh, before I begin any of the video editing, mm. well, and yeah, that way, well. uh, yeah, yeah, it, it just it just gets the pace uh, of it. You can decide, you can sort of control it much more when you've got the audio in place, and then you can go back and do the video. Right, and you can. And that's, that's sorry. Go on. No, no, you go. You go. You I was go. just going <laughs> to say, it's like it's a really useful tool as well to match the pacing of the animations to the. Um, sort of tempo not necessarily the actual mm. tempo but the general pacing of the music um, I find mm. that it can be a good sort of um, uh, foundation for the animations to, to be supported by do, do you find that yeah, well? yeah definitely yeah. oh yeah completely and actually the the animations will be will be largely determined by what's happening underneath in terms of mm. in terms of the audio and um, yeah and so it's massively it's massively affected by the by the audio, so I could. I, I think my for, for my first essay, for my shining essay, I just sort of started from from the beginning and and then recorded the audio in chunks, right. the, sort of the voiceover in chunks, and then sort of constructed it from beginning to end. Yeah. And it was such a, it was it was such a painful experience yeah. because I, I mean it was an, it was enjoyable in the sense that it was the first time I was doing it, but it was painful because I, uh, I I, I didn't have the feel for it, for the essay, mm. so I ended up having to go back and and shift things around and move things around in order to get the pacing correct. Yeah. Because I hadn't established it beforehand. Right, right, yeah. So after that, from from essay two to essay forty, now I'm on. I think it's forty. Goodness, um, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's I know it's ridiculous. Well, it's been two years now. Then I nearly two years that I started started for my it's, first it's one. A long process. Okay. It is a long process. Yeah. It takes a long while, and I'm I'm so I'm uh, very close to fifty thousand subscribers. Wow. <laughs> uh, that which be an is, achievement. Yeah, it'll it's. It, it's crazy, really, to even think about that number of people. Um, let alone yeah. more than that. When I'm, I'm obviously I'm hoping that it'll that it'll continue to grow. But I mean, that is just a 
crazy number of people. It really is. If you imagine that many people in front of you whilst you're talking, it's a bit yeah. scary almost, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I can't I mean, imagine it, is... to be honest. But No, I wouldn't do it. No. If, if there were 50,000 people in front of me, no. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I mean... I, I mean... could even move. <laughs> No, quite, yeah. And and, and actually, the, the reason, I mean, part of the reason that I ha- that I do the sort of the voiceover instead of the stuff to camera is is because actually I, ca- I like that distance. I like the anonymity of, of being listening in. Yeah. I'm basically a, pers- I'm basically a persona. Right, yeah. I'm, the, it is a different character to who I am. Mm. Mm. It is, it's me, obviously, but it, uh, but it's sort of you. You're, I'm putting something else. There's a distance between me as a person and listening in, um, which I quite like because it. Well, I mean, firstly because I was worried about the sort of negative comments, but also, I, I think you can get you can you can make it much more emotional and you can make it much more direct by having a voiceover with animations instead of a instead of the to camera stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in my opinion, I mean, it, but saying that you know. There are so many uh, YouTubers who do it so well, and they, you know, like Adam Neely, David Bruce, they they do it so fantastically. Yeah. And actually, a, a huge part of the reason why I don't do it as well is because I don't, you know, I don't like doing it. I actually, yeah. I don't think I could do that to camera stuff. Yeah, I've, um, I, so I, <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's very difficult to try, and and just like. T- the amount of takes that you'd have to do as well, because yeah. with audio you can just go, oh, that was rubbish. I'll do another take. You know, in in in. Uh, but with with the uh, with the camera and the audio, it, it basically cubes your time taken up by that. It does. Know. It does. Must, and I've tried. I have tried in the past yeah. because I was inspired by I was inspired by Adam Dealey and David Bruce. Yeah. So I was like, okay, they you know they could do it. Let's let's just give it a go. And I and I got out my camera and I and I had a script ready and I tried reading it and. And it just didn't work. I firstly because I hated the way that I looked, which is yes. oh, I, I no, could never get over that. But yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why I can't do it. But uh, <laughs> but I could I couldn't get over that. And also I was just stumbling over the script. I, I wasn't the the pace was wrong. I was worrying more about how I looked and what my background looked like instead oh, really? of you know what I was actually saying or how I was saying it. Hmm. So I was like, no, that's, that's not that's not bother. Let's just go back to the voiceover. Yeah, um, fair enough. Which I which I like. I mean, you're I mean, playing I, your strengths, you, aren't you? Yeah, I, I think, so. and it's also now that I've set it up in a particular way, you know, that the people expect, you know, for listening in videos to be an animated video with, you know, uh, animations and graphics and a voiceover. Mm. And and so, I mean, obviously, if I changed it now, people would get used to it. Yeah. But I would basically have to, go, I feel like I would go have to go back to square one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Because I would have to, like, yeah. relearn yeah, well, it would be how a, to do it all. Yeah, it would be a completely different style from all of your other work. And, and you've put so many, mm. I mean, literally years into the work you've done now. And, and it would literally <laughs> yeah. be, like, going all the way back to that very start and doing a completely different type of video. Because you've, mm. you've um, embedded this this sort of format now, haven't you? Mm. So it would be, yeah. yeah, it's quite tricky to get out of it. But people love it, so there's no, why, don't fix what ain't broken, right? <laughs> well, no, you're right. I mean, but the, the people do, people do seem to, to, to like it, which is amazing. And, and actually just to have anyone watching my videos was, because, you know, right at the beginning, as we've, as we sort of discussed in emails, you just don't get any views. And yeah. And it is it is a massive it's it's fun to create the videos but it's also a little bit just dispiriting because you're you're putting things out there and you, you know you're not getting many views for right. for your videos but they then when they do come you sort of can't quite believe I it. know <laughs> I know I completely get that like I, I every now and then I'll just get because uh, I obviously I don't have that many subscribers at the moment but. Um, Every now and you then I'll get top. like a new subscriber notification. And I'll be like, oh yes, you know, like every single, like every little one. Or like I'll get a comment and it'll be like you, a big deal for me at, at the moment. You'll eventually, you'll eventually turn that off. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll eventually get, you'll eventually get annoyed. But to be honest, I can't wait it, for that day when I have to turn it off. <laughs> I know, but it's it is amazing. Yeah, in the beginning, you literally you're counting, you're counting subscribers. You're like, oh my god, I've got an extra yeah. extra subscriber. Every individual one, yeah. But then. And then you get to a point, and I don't really know how it happens, and I don't really know what is controlling it—the YouTube algorithm. Mm. You know, over the past, mystery. and I'm really, I'm really, I'm really hoping that um, it is a mystery. But I'm really hoping that this will continue, and I'm not sort of jinxing it. But I have had uh, quite uh, healthily over the past, uh, ever uh, over the past three months, I've had ten thousand subscribers gained a month. Oh wow! Goodness. So. And that is that is just a ridiculous number. I mean, when I when I started this, 
I thought if I can get, firstly if I can get a thousand subscribers, I thought that'd be amazing. Yeah. I thought you know that that's that's you know that's the goal, a thousand subscribers, and then. I thought, well, maybe if I can get ten thousand, yeah, yeah, that'll be okay. That'll be that'll be pretty good, and I can call it call it quits then. I'm like, okay, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm happy. I've done that. Ten thousand subscribers, and then and then you sort of go, oh, well, yeah, okay, I've reached ten thousand. Maybe I can get to twenty and thirty, and then your goal sort of, <laughs> you know, it just expands and expands yeah. and expands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, which is which is a nice position to be in. It's certainly, very nice. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, from someone who's sort of been a fan for since, since I think you had about 25,000 subscribers and I just like and that mm. wasn't that long ago when I found you to be honest I mean it, I, I, no 25 was I think it was last year at some point at uh, the end of last year yeah it was definitely Might last year but uh it, it wasn't it was only a few months ago you know it wasn't like mm. I found you a couple of years ago or something and I remember I found you because I was um I was writing uh, I'm d- a score for a video game and I was trying to look into like John Williams action music sort of style and I found mm. your John Williams um, video, the one on uh, the the Phantom Menace soundtrack. I th- I think. Oh yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, the Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I thought, oh, this is great. I I, I hope he does a, a John Williams action music. So I just subscribed at that minute because I thought it was such a great video, and I just wanted to watch all the rest. <laughs> then I suddenly thought, hold on a minute, this how's this guy only got twenty five thousand subscribers? This is like literally in my opinion as good as nerd writer if not better because it's music so <laughs> <laughs> well that's what i was trying to do the nerd writer of music that was my yeah no I, that was I, my aim you completely achieved that for sure i i, oh, I thank you <laughs> it's, it's a shock to me that you don't have a, a million subscribers yet honestly it's it really is well i mean that is I, uh, that's very very kind of you to be honest i i, I just feel amazed that i have as many subscribers as i have uh, it it's a we it, it's, it's a weird thing because you think you, I actually really just have to be grateful for every anything that you have and any sort of attention you're getting online. Of course. And if it, if it happens to expand and it happens happens to grow, then then amazing. And I'm just going to continue to make make the videos and continue to enjoy making the videos. And I just need to keep coming up with topics to make videos about. Mm. And and actually, the one of the great things is that I feel like I, I feel like I'm sort of building a little little community yeah. of sort of diehard supporters and fans who who watch everything and always get comments for them and always reply to their comments and it's it's just a really nice it's a really nice thing it's a, it's a lovely thing and I'm so, I'm so pleased I set it up and I never would have thought I'd, I would have done this and I, I honestly if you if you'd said to me five years ago that you would have, you'll set up a YouTube channel and even have you know ten subscribers let alone fifty thousand or whatever <laughs> I have now. Then I would go. No, that's just bonkers. I'm. I'm not going to do that. I. I'm. I'm a composer. I'm this. Uh, you know, high flutian composer. Yeah. But it's. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. Yeah, I've heard Definitely. that from a lot of people actually. That. That honestly, like, all of their best opportunities have come, or just general um, satisfaction has come mm. from their YouTube channel. Like JJ, I mm. was saying about earlier. He before he set it up. Yeah, he was doing quite well with his composition, but. Once he'd set it up and started gaining some attraction, um, mm. he said that you know he's never had as many opportunities in his life as a result, and he's had he's taught over two hundred people now. He does private tutoring. Um, oh and that's, wow, that's, that's fantastic! Direct, that's a direct result of his YouTube channel, essentially. Um, mm. And uh, you know, a lot of his a lot of his composition gets um, noticed by people who are looking for um, scores, or um, you know, he's doing a theme park. Th- music for a theme park at the moment or oh wow cool yeah, so, but um that's really cool i just mean that you know it is really uh, that that's one one of the reasons why i started it other than enjoyment i thought these mm. people are getting so many opportunities i need to i mm. get on this bandwagon <laughs> yeah and it definitely is true I and mean, I mean, had i had i sort of continued the composition uh, alongside it then i'm sure I'm sure opportunities would have come as a result. Of, and actually, that, tell a lie, an opportunity has come as a result of composition. So I'm working with um, Mercer Island High School in uh, in um, uh, Seattle, uh, and I've written a piece for them for Wind Band. Um, wow. And the idea is that um, they're going to record it remotely, I'm going to put it together, and then I'm going to do a video about it. Um, right. And that opportunity, that is an example of an opportunity that couldn't have come as a result of me uh, just sitting at home writing music, uh, creating the YouTube channel, you know, directly resulted in that. And actually it's resulted in in so many other things. It, it, in just a, I've connected with so many people that I wouldn't have connected with otherwise, yeah. you know, with, with, these, with, with loads of YouTubers who I've talked with and, and have emailed and 
and who are so nice and and actually that there is a little there's a community that that exists around music youtube yes. and they all sort of support each other and it's really it's, it's an incredibly wholesome wholesome thing yes. and i'm hoping to get more involved you know in, in in future months with all of that and to to sort of do more collaborations sure as well that would be fun yeah definitely yeah i i um i think there's a really really great community a sense of community from uh, Christian Henson's YouTube channel. Have you ever come across Oh, yeah, him? yeah. Yeah, mm. it's, it's just amazing the amount of people that are, get involved with his activities and stuff. He does all of these piano book. He's got a website called Piano Book where they, people upload oh, free yeah. virtual instruments that they've made, like sample libraries. And it's, oh, wow. it's amazing because there's, there's probably thousands on there now and, and loads of them are exceptional to be honest um and stuff mm. that you would probably pay for quite a lot of money in some cases and they're very unique and mm. original i use some of the stuff on their website frequently in my work um and oh, uh, that's fantastic what a, that's such a good idea i know it, he, he's probably a genius or something honestly it's, he's come up with so <laughs> many amazing business ideas i mean spitfire audio you may have heard of um which is his sample library company oh. and he's the co-founder of that and uh, still is like probably i think he's the managing director or he's one of the execs you know um i didn't realize that ah that's oh that's fantastic yeah, God, and, that is incredibly um entrepreneurial yeah and he's a full-time media composer and he runs this very prolific youtube channel that's gained mm. a huge amount of attraction and uh, mm. everyone loves him basically and it, it's, <laughs> it's great but it's, it, it's everyone's so I mean, nice so, yeah it's us. amazing these like the the opportunities that, yeah the, the the community that can be created around these channels the the opportunities that can come from it the, the just to and and actually just an opportunity to to create and to do something and to put something out into the world uh it's so it's it's personally beneficial because it forces you to create something to make something on a on a reasonably regular basis and put yeah. it out into the world yeah. um and it actually also forces you to improve constantly yes. because every single video you put out you're trying to better yourself and that's part of the huge motivation for actually putting another new video out is that you can better yourself from your previous video and you can do slightly better and you can try more interesting animation you can try mm. a more daring topic or a more uh, interesting approach to the essay um and and then people start to recognize that and that sort of builds the community because you're also being consistent and your your uploads are uh, of the same sort of style but they, they sort of get better and better and people go along with you on that journey mm. and the same people keep appearing in the comments and it's really lovely because you're like okay you're just you're returning because you you like my previous essay so you've come you've come for my next one which is which is amazing and it's great that they've they sort of come along for the ride and the journey um yeah and that's that's a big part of, that's a big part of the sort of uh, the motivation for, to keep going because they I mean they are a huge amount of effort they do take a lot of a lot of work and you I don't think it would be well, it certainly wouldn't be worthwhile if you didn't have that sort of sense of community and that feeling that that you were actually helping either helping people or making people uh, happy with right. your essays yeah, and definitely. they're actually enjoying the things you're producing yeah yeah there's nothing better than than that I would say I mean mm. there's there's one it's one thing to enjoy video editing but it probably like you say it wouldn't be worthwhile like, doing a youtube channel without the sort of um the constant feedback loop with all the great people that are in connection now yeah so i mean there are obviously there are some strange comments as well but <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do come but you just sort of have to ignore those yeah yeah of course yeah well i mean the world's yeah. full of narcissists as well isn't it so yeah, but there are a lot of, I mean, a lot of YouTubers and narcissists as, yeah, <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, well, you know, probably including myself slightly, but you know, sure I, I think you, I think you have to have a little bit of ego to put. Well, of course, I mean, it's, out onto the it's, internet. it's probably unhealthy to have no ego because we're ultimately survivalistic animals, aren't we? Really? Well, <laughs> that's true. That's that's quite base, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. We, but I mean, you have to, you have to want to share something with people and whether that's right. your thoughts or your um i mean it, it depends upon your type of channel but it could be a lot of different things you want to share with the world and in, in a sense that is quite egotistic because you're creating something based around you but actually that was i mean it was part of the motivation as i say for for having for calling it listening in for changing the channel name from barnaby martin composer i think it was originally or something or right. just barnaby martin right. because it it divorced it from me and it became about the music and the essays and Fair the enough, community yeah. and and I quite I quite like that actually I'm, I'm, I'm I don't, don't know about you have you uh, did you consider yeah sort of moving away from Louis Taylor or did you or are you going to stick with I'm that I'm going to stick with it because for me it's it's not just a 
it's not just like four video essays. I I like up. I really enjoy the more in depth like demos that I I, I um I've done a couple of of in the past, and mm. um I I I really enjoy like yourself like educating um to the best of my ability, and I think mm-hmm. that keeping myself keeping my name on there um brings like me closer to the people that i'm actually talking with on 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 the channel um Mm. and also i think that it's probably quite useful for me as a composer to have my name on there Mm. um because that's yeah definitely it's it's almost like a portfolio in some respects um Mm. so if anyone did land on my channel or something they'd know exactly who it was and that might be useful for them to contact oh yeah i can completely and uh, you know like david bruce he's done that as well david bennett as well he's sort of kept the name and actually, because when I when I changed the channel name to Listening In, I had loads of um, I had loads of videos of um, school videos on there of my my pieces, right. which I made un I made unlisted so they can only be accessed via my website. Yeah, to sort of basically make a clean break and say, okay, this is something new. This is something. This is like an ent- like an entity in itself. Yeah, Listening yeah. In exists. Yeah, it's like a brand beyond. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is it, exactly. It's 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 a brand and. So I sort of really bought into that. But the slight annoying thing is that, of course, you have to change your Google name. So everything <laughs> everything for me for Google is called Listening In. <laughs> and Google thinks my first name is Listening. <laughs> which, That's pretty funny. Which is really, it is quite annoying. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to have um, my YouTube channel. It's the same channel. I, I did change it. Um, it used to be called Ledge Productions. <laughs> well, Ledge Productions. Yeah. Um, That's not re- excellent. It's, I, I, it's because it, I used to make films, like I say, and I uploaded all of these crappy short films. They were like something like 60 in the end. They were awful. But I wouldn't Gosh, be right. anywhere near as good as video editing as I am now without that sort of practice. Um, yeah. And uh, it was because my one of my best friends at school had a YouTube channel, and he's a, he is a filmmaker, and he... Um, mm. He, his little sort of brand for was called Edge Productions, and I just thought my name's Louis. I'm just going to stick an L in front of it just to sort of piss him off. Oh, I see. <laughs> and and, and uh, it just kind of stuck on basically. And then I just thought, right, I need to just like be a bit more professional now and change it to like my name. <laughs> I'm Louis Louis Taylor. Yeah. Louis Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I was going to ask as well if you'd ever um, considered getting involved in media composition yourself, um, especially because mm. it seemed like some of the some 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 of the stuff that put you off um, composing more full time might have been a financial reason as well. Um, I mean, I might I might be sort of a sp- no no you're 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 bang on the money there uh, ironically there mm. uh, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. the money is in contemporary classical music. Uh, People don't really talk about it. it. It's something that is not is not talked about. And I found I found that particularly difficult. Yeah. The, so the it wasn't something we necessarily discussed a lot. And when I, you know, being a contemporary composer, people didn't really talk about, you know, how much they were paid for commissions. And, and it, it it was a bit of a uh, a topic that was avoided um, in discussions. There were a few courses that talked about it in a bit more detail, but you never really knew how much you could potentially earn. Could you if if even could, you could earn a living as a as a composer, as a contemporary composer, um, right? And and I found that actually, you know, that most of the time people were expecting either music for no money or music for not particularly, you know, not not a huge financial uh, return. So it's it's something that it's not it's not a very lucrative business, and most people who are contemporary composers also uh, teach. Um, they do academic teaching as well, or they right. do other yeah. things on the side. Um, and because I'd never really. I'd never really got into the the world of media comp- uh, composition. I never I never really considered it strongly. Um, so oh. I, I think because I th- I thought I didn't I wasn't um, uh, sort of uh, used to the the programs and the systems that were used for for film and TV composition. But I I've always thought that had I had another opportunity, I'd have loved to have have done it. It was something that I'd been really interested in doing. Um, how did yeah, yeah. how did you get into into doing it then? Did you did you just decide that that was the route you wanted to take? Well, it was kind of I kind of hit a crossroad because <clears throat> in my A levels I um actually didn't start off doing music. I was doing um uh film and television and mm. uh, history and um basically uh I just I suddenly thought I really just need to do music again because mm-hmm. I I kind of got fed up of it. A bit like yourself, I got to sort of grade four, lower grade on the piano and just sort of thought this just all this grade system is not working for me. I'm not enjoying mm. the 
the, the strict nature of it. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be this strict. I mean, mo I know a lot of play people in America don't even do grades, and in Russia they mm. don't do that. Or, um, and I just think it's too strict for me. I don't really work very well like that. Um, so, that, but then I started to get this passion for it again out of nowhere, and mm. um, and started doing music again. But I was still doing film. So and I thought, why not sort of couple the two together and do film music for my own films, basically, yeah, yeah. and other and my my um, co students' films, basically. And I started to realise how much I loved doing it, and mm. I always loved film music anyway. Um, so it was it suddenly became a dream for me to become a, bit, a media composer. Um, oh, I can imagine because I I, I I can imagine it being a really uh, amazing thing to do, and I as I say would have loved to have gone down that path. Um, and, and, yeah. and in many respects, the sort of my creation of all these sort, sort of film video essays is me trying to <laughs> sort of claw a little piece out of the film music world that I would have loved to have been in. Because I would, I yeah. think, I, I, I don't know exactly how it would have worked, but I would have loved to have written for film. But I only realised that quite late. And by that mm. point, I would have had to gone back to study uh, and it would have had to gone through a different system than I, than I went through um, with my right. sort of contemporary composition. Um, but it would have been, yeah, it would have been really fun. So do you do sort of imagine you want to want to write for, for films or for sort of larger scale things as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've just finished a video game score and I love doing video game music. I'm doing mm. another video game as we speak too. Um, and they're like, you know, much bigger projects because short films tend to be within sort of, 10 15 minute range maybe mm. 20 um so there's, there is a huge amount of room for musical opportunity but mm. it's a fairly limited amount of music whereas the games i've done one of the scores i've done is 90 minutes long so it's, it's a lot um, of music it's, it's a lot it of music is, yeah, yeah and and it took me 10 or 11 months to finish it basically God, and wow. um and, and it was i loved every minute of it um and i'd mm. love to do more stuff like that and i really really want to get into the sort of tv music world like mm. i love i'd love to score some t contemporary television dramas well actually that's where it, that's, i mean they're basically you know extended films aren't they and you've got the opportunity to write a huge amount of, of music um yeah and the themes and can be uh, so extended and developed and yes that, definitely yeah. it's it's where it's the basically the future for for media composers yeah so i i, I, I really i i sort of watch from afar now and uh I'm amazed by the people who can create so much music so quickly. Um, I can write music reasonably quickly, but nowhere near as probably as quick as it would be required to create for TV and film, where you have, you know, yeah. a set of months to write hours and hours of music. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, John... Well, the deadline's quite a good incentive, to be honest. <laughs> That's but... true. No, yeah, the deadline <laughs> will be good. I mean, John Williams, he... He writes a ridiculous at a ridiculous pace, uh, and I just don't. Yeah. I just don't know so how like he does it. Two minutes every day or something. It's it's absolutely bonkers. Two minutes every day. I mean, two minutes. That's yeah, just astonishing crazy. about his music to write in a and day. And the the density of his music as well. Mm. I mean, it's it's quite. It's, some of his music is quite formulaic in some sense because he he's got an incredibly good sort of set of. Um, musical devices that mm. he uses over and over again but mm. it's so original and it, those devices in themselves are so original that they never mm. get old and and everyone loves his music and stuff mm. and, and Hans Zimmer is another extremely prolific um film film scorer mm. uh, he apparently he writes 10 minutes a day which is unbelievable to think about to that is just I... he gets up um into the studio at 11 a.m and then doesn't leave until about three or four in the next sort of like night if that makes sense oh my gosh right wow spends the entire like day and night there basically and it gets about five hours sleep and goes in which for me is a bit unhealthy because that does have a health function on less than seven hours sleep but um no. some people manage it i mean for some people they can't do their job without like getting little sleep which is a bit of a shame to be honest but well i don't i don't know how he does that that's that sounds like a sort of difficult life but i i can i can appreciate that handsome's music is is slightly He's probably slightly quicker than John Williams because the just the sure. intricacy, and probably also the way that he writes. I think uh, from from videos and things, I think Hans Zimmer writes by using um, direct MIDI input into a right, probably using something like Cubase, yeah. Um, whereas John Williams, I think one of the most astonishing things is handwriting. I know he does short yeah. scores for things, but but even short scores, handwriting two minutes of, of music right. every single day and then giving to his orchestrator, uh, that is just an astonishing turnaround. Um, it really is, yeah. Yeah, so it, 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 I, it would have been it would have been amazing to write for film music. I think I think partly is that I. I don't think I would have been good enough. Actually, I don't think 
my music is very esoteric, but it became very esoteric. It became very difficult towards. Thank you so much for your, <laughs> for your time. My pleasure. Well, it's good to finally meet you, Louis. It's, it's really great to finally meet you as well. Yeah, see you around. Thanks very much for watching that, everyone. Um, unfortunately, we had to cut that off a little bit early due to some technical difficulties, but I thought that was a really, really wonderful conversation. Uh, if you'd like to hear more of Barnaby's music, you can check out his website, um, which should be linked below. And please, please, please do check out his YouTube channel. It's a phenomenal resource for any musician or composer, and I would say that for the any uh, person looking for some entertainment, it's absolutely fantastic as well. The the depth that he goes into uh, in the videos is astonishing, and um, it's incredibly comprehensive and so well thought out. And and the the animations and the whole editing process is incredibly beautiful. So it's it's well worth a watch and a subscription. So please do go ahead and check his channel out. Like I say, it's linked below, and I'll link it above. Just for you guys too so thank you once again um it's been really great see you later have a good one